Hello, everyone. Um, let's let's keep talking. Good to see everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in and and, and watching this. Uh, let's try to talk a little bit more about uh, fluids. Let's talk a little bit more about fluids and, in particular, Bernoulli's equation on a particular problem that we'll call the fountain problem. We will see what goes on in a fountain, how high the the water goes and what amount of water there is uh, making something like this happen. I guess intuitively, uh, th this is the, the, the amazing thing about Bernoulli's equation, and we, we more, or, more or less derived it at an earlier time. We more or less derived it at an earlier time, got a little bit of a, uh, an intuitive feeling for what it's all about. It is a discussion pertaining to conservation of energy. It uses, it is it's a statement of conservation of energy in the sense of, period, it's a statement of conservation of energy and it is that statement of conservation of energy in the sense that it's, uh, it's energy per unit volume. It is an equation that holds in many, many circumstances, can be applied in a wide range of circumstances and it holds if for a fountain, let's say, that doesn't have a lot of water coming out of it and it shoots up 100 meters into the air but there's not a lot of water coming out of it, Bernoulli's equation can be used to, to talk about various things. What if the fountain is much larger and it still shoots the water at 100 meters height but there's a lot more volume of water getting up to that height? Intuitively, I think we all know for that to happen in the same period of time, for a huge amount of water to be thrown up that high in a specific period of time, there's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done compared to a similar situation where water is thrown to the same height, but it's much less volume of water being thrown to that same height in that same period of time. So the fact that Bernoulli's equation tells you compactly what's going on per unit volume, uh, you kind of need to know the volume under consideration per unit period of time to really know specifically the amount of work being done, the amount of work being done in a particular period of time. The equation holds regardless of whether you're talking about a small fountain throwing water up into the air 100 meters in height or a fountain throwing, uh, a huge fountain throwing water to the same height, 100 meters in height, but it's a huge amount of water to which that's being done. The water that I use in my sink and the water that the entire city of a big city such as Chicago or New York is going to use, uh, the water is much, the, the amount, the volume of water is much different, therefore the work that is required to transport it is much different. Though Bernoulli's equation works in all circumstances. So Bernoulli's equation talks about uh, everything related to the units of pressure is really what it is. I'm going to write it down, and we've already, you know, we've already derived it. We don't need to derive it again, but let's write it down and know a few things that are going on when we do so. Um, so, I mean, we know, you know, there's numerous ways. I guess you can write it. They all mean the same thing. That's pressure. That's a P. Uh, Whereas this is the Greek letter rho, which is an R sound. Uh, obviously, the P sound in the Latin uh, letter P and rho uh, has an R sound to it. That's velocity or magnitude of velocity. One half rho v two squared plus rho g y two. Okay, well, you know, been there, done that, you guys. We've we've been there, we've seen this. So they're all the same. All the units are the same. It's actually units of work divided by volume. And you saw me when I derived it last time. So really, it's energy density energy per unit volume, work per unit volume. Pressure, in some sense, can be viewed 
as work per unit volume, energy per unit volume. These are all in the same units of, well, if you had mass here, what's one half mass times velocity squared? Those are, that's kinetic energy. I know it's rho, but let's forget that it's rho for a second. One half mass times the magnitude of velocity squared is energy units. Mass divided by volume is rho. So it's energy per unit volume. Uh, mass times g times a height is energy or work divided by volume. m divided by volume is going to be rho. So it's going to be work per unit volume. This right here, force times distance is energy or work. Energy or work, uh, force times distance divided by volume. Well, volume is area times distance. The distance is canceled and you got force over area. Wait a minute, that's pressure. All of these are in terms of units of pressure. The units of pressure is, well, joule per unit volume, joules per cubic meters, which actually come out to newtons per square meter, uh, which come out to pascals. But pascals are newtons per square meter. Yeah, but if you multiply the newton by a distance, you got work. If you multiply the square, the square meter by a distance, you got three dimensions, you got volume, you got work per volume. They're all in terms of work per unit volume. Every one of those items is work per unit volume. As I say here, and I have this, I have this on canvas for everybody. In both the non the, the noun calc version of uh, of mechanics and in the calc based version of okay. so calculus and non calculus treatment you'll have this you'll have this in canvas you do have this in canvas um, I say here is Dr Katz to, and this is from the Katz book I'm going with the Katz book right now but it applies to, to to all the stuff that we're learning guys in any any class that that's being taught pertaining to this. As Dr. Katz tells us, Bernoulli's equation is a statement of the work energy theorem for ideal fluid flow. Essentially, Bernoulli's equation, uh, and we, you know, we write it down, they, there's various ways this can be written, guys. I have this in the notes. I don't want to dwell too much on stuff that I've already done. Let's just kind of get to the solution. Let's get to the problem and then to a solution uh, re uh, in relation to that problem. Uh, it's basically a restatement of conservation of energy uh, per unit volume, and I've, I just said that. In Bernoulli's equation, we talk about energy density or work density. In Bernoulli's equation, we talk about energy density or work density being conserved. And, you know, again, we talked about that, and I gave a derivation pertaining to it um, in, in another video where we talk about that. So we have, you, you have access to that. And you have this, like I said, as we said, we have it on Canvas as well. So we know the whole song and dance. It gets out there. Um, all the stuff we talked about, you guys, is obviously Bernoulli's equation and statements pertain to conservation of energy in one way or another. So what I say here is, with all, with all of this kept in mind, the following problem seen earlier uh, might have been seen in another class, you guys. might have been seen in, in the calc version. Those of you who don't have the calc version, let me, let me talk to you right now and kind of make, make it straight, I guess you could say. It goes like this. Here's how the problem goes. Um, a fountain sends water to a height of 100 meters. What must be the pressurization above atmospheric of the water system? They tell us that one atmosphere of pressure is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth newtons per square meters. There's 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. A pascal is one newton per square meter. At maximum height of 100 meters, we have maximum PE and no KE. So there's a number of ways we can, we can kind of play this uh, to get there. And there's, there's stuff you can say about this. Um, see what we can say about this, about the pressurization and everything else. We can say that there's going to be a change in work that's done. And there's going to be a change in work that's, you know, there, there's a change in work somehow. Any, any change of work that's going to take place is from the mechanical standpoint is going to be a change in kinetic energy plus a, t a change in potential energy. Well, if you divide, we say at the very top, if, if every drop of water that's present 
is eventually going to find itself up to a height of 100 meters. Every single drop. It's going to be done at different times. I mean, there's water that preceded it that got up to 100 meters. And as, as such, there's water uh, underneath it that is reaching to 100 meters. But every single drop of water uh, in this problem is going to find itself to a maximum height. Every single drop reaching a maximum height has no kinetic energy when it reaches that height. All of its kinetic energy, whatever it may have been, reached a, uh, all of its kinetic energy went into potential energy for each drop. So let's see what we can do here. Tell you what I'm going to do. At the very top, there's no kinetic energy. So we got delta W, and I'm not, you know, I, this, this delta W is a little ambiguous in its own right. This is not velocity, this is volume, okay? That's volume. Uh, delta PE, here we go, we're setting this up for a pressurization. V is equal to volume, okay? As we said in this particular case, in this particular case, capital V, maybe I can make it bigger. I mean, I'm trying to make the, the, the velocities or magnitude of velocity small. So this guy right here is volume. Uh, if that's the case, this difference in the work at the end of the day divided by V is actually delta P, delta pressure. There's a pressure 1 minus a pressure 2 or a pressure 2 minus a pressure 1. That's not a big deal. Um, that's all going to rise up to this guy. Well, what's going on here, guys? I mean, there, 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 I guess there's a lot you can say. I mean, perhaps uh, the earlier stuff is a, is a good way to view it. I mean, you could say kind of at the end of all this, kind of back, almost, I don't want to completely backtrack. Like I said, we've already kind of gone, we've already gone here. Uh, but let's say, as we've done in the past, you guys, just say a few things, I guess. I, I think maybe I can leave that alone for one second, guys. We know that based on stuff we've done in the past, we've kind of said that there's, you know, W1 uh, plus one half MV1 squared. Let me just see exactly how I wanted to write it in the beginning, guys. Let me kind of make so many ways to look at this. Um, sort of debating how I'm going to go with this, but let's. I, I did. I did make this statement. It's a. It's a true statement. But let me give you some foundation. Let me go back to why this statement is indeed true, and we start playing these games right here, you guys. Um, you can basically take. You know Bernoulli's equation. You know how we derived it. Let's sort of derive it again, but not quite. Maybe not go in that same kind of detail. But you're talking about, let's say, and we made statements on this when we, we drew the pipe. And I do have the pipe drawn, the, the generic pipe drawn that, that kind of shows what's going on with Bernoulli's equation. The same generic pipe that kind of started low, went high, whatever. It could have started high and gone low. I made it going low from low going high. It doesn't really matter how that's working out, you guys. As long as the generic pipe is there and you're actually looking to try to make this thing work. Um, so we're saying something like this, and we, we kind of said you can kind of, you know, which one do you want to call which? It, it, largely doesn't matter. I think right here is the, the argument. The argument's really the important thing. If you, take, if you take W2 and subtract W2 on each side, and then subtract both of these on each side, uh, you're talking about, and again, this is similar to what we've done in the past. So I'm going to subtract W1 on each side. I'll subtract W1 on each side. Then I'll subtract each one of these on each side as well. So W1 minus W2 is all by itself. Then you end up having 1 half uh, M V2 squared minus 1 half M V1 squared uh, plus MGY2 
minus mg y1. And then you say, okay, yeah, that's, that's true. Tell you what, uh, we know there's the same volume flow rate throughout the pipe by virtue of the continuity equation. Volume flowing per unit time. Volume flowing per unit time is identical given the continuity equation, given the continuity of the pipe. What goes in comes out. It's set up in that way. No matter what constrictions we're, we're finding, no matter what kind of elevation we're finding, or uh, downhill movement of the water or uphill movement of the water, you name it. Okay? Uh, so we know that. The volume is the same for everybody. That's the case. That's where they're dividing by the volume under consideration. Divide by capital V on each side. And that's kind of where they're getting this. Um, at the end of the day, we're talking about something like this. This is, I'm trying to give you an idea where this all came from. Well, before you divided, before you divided by V, W1 minus W2 is delta W. Before you divided by V, W1 minus W2 is delta W, way over there. Before you divided by V, the change in the kinetic energy is just that, the change in the kinetic energy. And it, it happens to be, it happens to go to zero. Uh, we'll talk about that eventually. Um, and this is the change in the potential energy. This is before you divide by V. Well, uh, like we said, guys, it was, it's, it's kind of looking like that. That's where it's going. Let me... You know, let me leave it there. I wrote it. I, I kind of my, my timing on this is not the best, but let's. I think you see where I'm coming from. So, the top stuff, you guys, is basically that's delta W, that's delta K E, that's delta P E. Uh, that's how it all works out. Let me, for just one second, not put it at zero right now. Just say as a general statement of fact. That's what I'm saying. That's what the tops are. When you divide by V, uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have delta W over V, which is the change in the pressure. Delta KE over V, uh, and you're going to get, again, you're going to get various things here. How are you going to actually... Uh, change in the pressure, this is the change in the pressure associated with kinetic energy, this is the change in the pressure associated with potential energy, and if this is actually a constant, if delta P is a constant, these two have to add up to that constant, though they can vary. The change in kinetic energy might be quite drastic. If that happens, you know, you know, that might be a big number that we're talking about uh, pot potentially here, we're not talking about a big difference in height. If there's a big difference in height, there ain't much difference in, you know, so uh, where does this go to? I mean, from, from where does something go? But this is kind of where it's coming from, you guys. And that's where they're, they're trying to say some of this. So it's coming out to, stuff is basically easier done than said. Delta PE is going to be all this stuff which is going to be uh, delta Ke divided by V and delta Pe. What's going on here? It, in, in kind of a convoluted way, you guys, when they're saying this, haven't we said in the past that there's just, if, if, if the work, if this delta W is a constant, these guys got to add up to a constant, but what does that mean? If you got a lot of potential energy, then the delta Ke, there, there's not a, you know, there, there, there's a small value for the, um, a small value of kinetic energy, or the kinetic energy goes to a point where it's going to be, uh, maybe there's a big drop off. If you gained, if you gained a lot of potential energy that, that was not initially present, the Ke must have lost quite a bit. So a negative, how much did you lose? Well, I don't know, it dropped, you know, went down negative something. Let's say this totals 100. Uh, if this went up 200, this must have fallen 
negative 100. What's negative 100 plus 200? It's 100. So it adds up a lot like this stuff plays out the same way that, hey, I just fired something off the top of a building. Great amount of potential energy initially present. Midway down in the fall, much potential energy has gone. Well, where has it gone? It went to kinetic energy. Together, potential energy and kinetic energy still add up to the initial energy of the system. Well, the initial work difference that, that's going on here, that, that's being done, uh, and that's done per unit for over the course of one hour or something like that, how does this play out? If you gain, if you gain a lot of potential energy, if you gain a lot of kinetic energy, you lost a lot of potential energy. If you gain a lot of potential energy, you lost a lot of kinetic energy and it's going to add up the way it's supposed to add up. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense, guys. That you're allowed to have negative numbers in there and they all, these guys add up to a constant. Well, if this gets really big, that better get small because when they add up, they got to add up to that. If this gets really small, if you lose a lot of kinetic energy, how'd you lose a lot of kinetic energy? I got one way, I climbed up the top of the building and I'm holding onto the ball. There's no kinetic energy there. If there's no kinetic energy there, it's all potential energy. What about at the bottom? Well, there's no potential energy and all of it's kinetic energy at the very bottom. So, so on and so forth, that kind of a look to it. And that's how they kind of jump to that. Um, this is delta W divided by V. Delta W, delta W divided by V is delta P. And that's equal to this right here. And that's kind of where they're uh, more or less playing this right here, guys. The delta P, and again, I, I've got this in the notes. Hopefully it's you know pr pretty straightforward when we do that. Um, what the heck's going on here? Well, this delta P, you guys, this change in pressure is P1 minus P2. That's delta P. At the very top, you guys, at the very top, there's no kinetic energy. Uh, it, it, the kinetic energy dropped quite a bit. I mean, all, I, mean I, could, I, I guess I could say there's no kinetic energy at the very top. What kind of a pressure? What kind of a pressure differential uh, could bring me to that point? Or what, what, you know, what, what sort of thing could do it? And I'm saying it's this, which is actually this, to actually get you to that point. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it means this. It means uh, that's mg. V goes into here. Volume goes into mass it becomes rho. Volume goes into mass, it becomes rho, so it's rho g y2 minus rho g y1. Rho g y2 minus rho g y1. Change in pressure, you guys, that's this. The big story is rho g y2 minus y1. That's it. Uh, why is that? Because all the kinetic, in the beginning, all of the energy to which this delta can throw people more than anything. If it's kind of an issue for you, kind of get rid of the delta in your mind. Just throw the delta out a little bit, or just throw it out completely if you want, and just say, look, how does it work when something is thrown up into the air? Initially, when I throw a ball up into the air, it's all kinetic energy. Great. Uh, how much energy does the ball have anywhere in that trajectory if there's no wind resistance or anything like that? The energy is the exact same energy that you gave it initially. It's all kinetic energy initially. Midway up to its highest destination, midway up in that flight, it lost a lot of kinetic energy, but it gained as much potential energy as it lost in kinetic energy. The total energy of the system is the same. At the very top, there's no kinetic energy, and that's what I'm arguing right now. I'm saying don't put any kinetic energy into the system. At, at the very top, there's no kinetic energy in the system, and it's coming out to here. And that's how they're saying here. 
at the maximum height of 100 meters, we have, you know, I, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to say here is, um, at the maximum height of 100 meters, we have, so the delta, if it's an issue for you, throw it out and just say W equals KE plus PE. W is, for any period of time, the W over a period of time is the same in all circumstances. The well's working in a particular way, unless the water's shooting at different heights at different times. We're not going there. We could certainly work that if we played it carefully. But you kind of view it as W equals KE plus PE. The delta's there because I did a subtraction there. But kind of look at this whole big thing as a W. This whole big thing as, well, it's, it is a change in kinetic energy in a sense. Uh, and it, it, it's definitely a change in kinetic energy and a change in potential energy. But you kind of just throw the deltas out if you're having a problem visualizing it. Say W equals PE, uh, W equals KE plus PE. Okay, so what we have, guys, is, so the fountain sends water a fountain sends water to a height of 100 meters. What must be the pressurization above atmospheric of the water system? Uh, and they, you know, well, that's all we need to know right now. Uh, so if that's the case, what do you want to say? So at maximum height of 100 meters, we have maximum PE and no KE. And that's where they were kind of, that's, that's where early in the problem I wrote that. And you, you, got, you got this guy right here is equal to this. Well, wait a minute. Delta W divided by V is delta P. And delta KE divided by V is not mg times the quantity y2 minus y1. It's mg times the quantity y2 minus y1 divided by V. Well, m divided by V volume, m divided by V volume is rho. And this is what's going to solve it. This is essentially the way it's going to go to find the difference in the pressure that's going to make it happen. Um, let's see what we can say. Again, there was a little more detailed explanation in the other video pertaining to this. But perhaps it might have been a little bit of a different talk. So hopefully this helps a little bit with this. I mean, Bernoulli's equation is pretty fascinating. He's got some very wide-ranging applications. Uh, and there's a lot, even regarding fluid flow, that, uh, you know, I remember from the past, I don't know all the details of it, but there's a lot regarding fluid flow that uh, people don't know, and they try to explain various things. And so it's pretty fascinating stuff. It's not just uh, discovering what goes on in distant galaxies. Even something like fluid flow, there are problems that are very, very fascinating and still still baffling. I mean, they, they know things work, they know airplanes fly, and there's, they have a tough time explaining certain things. But uh, uh, they know enough, obviously you feel pretty good about going into an airplane, you know enough about, uh, there's enough of an argument as to why it's going to fly that you're okay. You know, and they've, and they've done it numerous times, obviously. Uh, indefinitely they've done it, right? So what do we got here, guys? It's a pretty easy problem. At, th at this point it becomes a very easy problem. I mean, it becomes delta P, that's the difference in pressure. What are you experiencing? Well, when the fountain shoots water up, there is atmospheric pressure all around trying to stop the water from coming out. You've got to be strong enough, the system has to be strong enough to fight the atmospheric pressure and then go beyond that to be able to throw every drop to 100 meters in height. So the density of water, well, let's, this is it. This is it. Let's just write it out. Now let's write it out. Rho is... 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, 9.8 or 9.81, depending on what they're asking you to do. Change in height, it started at zero and ended at 100. Zero was Y1, Y2 is, is 100. The delta P, uh, at the end of this song and dance, you guys, is this. Yeah, that's Pascal. I did, they didn't ask me for Pascal's. But there it is. In case they ask me, there it is. Uh, can I make it into atmospheres? Sure. Let me go up here. Delta P
we know that every one atmosphere, ladies and gentlemen, every one atmosphere uh, has 1.01 1, 1 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. That's newtons per square meter. 101,000. 1.01 times 10 to the fifth is 101,000. Okay. All right, should go okay. Uh, 980,000 divided by 101,000. Delta P is 9.7 atmospheres. You got it. You got to go 9 point. You have to go 9.7. You have to go nine. You have to go nine point seven atmospheres above atmospheric pressure to pull this off. It can't just have an absolute pressure coming out at nine. You know, the, the initiating the process. The absolute pressure can't be nine point seven. Nine point seven atmospheres has to be the difference between the absolute pressure and the atmospheric pressure. What does that mean? That means ten point seven. 10.7 minus the one atmosphere fighting it is the 9.7 gauge pressure. The 9.7 pressure. The absolute pressure has to be 10.7. The system has to be 9.7 atmospheres above the one atmosphere of surrounding atmospheric pressure. Above the surrounding atmosphere. It's got to be one. It, the system has to be 9.7 atmospheres. 9.7 atmospheres above the one atmosphere above the surrounding one atmosphere. So what does that mean? That means so you know so indeed it is a system it is a system giving absolute pressure of 10.7 atmospheres uh, which is fighting the one atmosphere pressure of the surrounding environment. The net pressurization above atmospheric is this. So basically guys how do you how are you going to play this? Um, you got delta p is essentially as we did this, it's P1. That's what you got to be able to generate in in the uh, the energy of the system shooting the water up. You got to generate this while you're fighting this. What are you talking about? Well, what you got to generate above what's around you, you know, is, is really what the problem is. Well, wait a minute. Delta P equals P1 minus one atmosphere pressure. Add one atmosphere on each side, P1 is delta P. Add one atmosphere on each side. P1 is 9.7 atmospheres plus one atmosphere. So there's a lot going on here, I guess you could say. Uh, the absolute pressure that, that has to be given in the system is 10.7. Um, true, true. Uh, that's what this guy is. So P1 would be the 10.7 atmospheres. So if they ask you that, what does the pressure of the system have to be in order to overcome the one atmosphere pressure of the environment called the atmosphere. The atmosphere itself has one atmosphere of pressure not allowing this to happen. You have to overcome the one atmosphere of pressure and exceed the one atmosphere of pressure by 97, by 9.7 atmospheres. You have to exceed it. Well, what do you have to be putting forth then? 10.7 atmospheres to get there. So be careful how they ask you the question. The way the question is answered is a final answer, you guys, is simply that delta P uh, for all of this, at the end of all this, guys, is they, they, they didn't really go there. They just said, hey, look, no. At the end of this, delta P is 9.7. 9.7 atmospheres. And that's the, they just want to know how much above it had to be. There's your final answer. And in, the, in my notes, I give it like that, and it's, we highlight it pretty good the way the question's asked. So you should be able to have access to it. 
Um, additionally, I kind of throw something else at you here. Additionally, one might ask, what is the speed of the water when initially exiting the system in order to reach the 100 meter maximum height? Okay, we just said now to reach that 100 meter maximum height, there has got to be a pressure above atmospheric pressure. There's got to be a pressure above atmospheric pressure that is um, 9.7 atmospheres. You need 9.7 atmospheres of pressure above atmospheric pressure. 10.7 atmospheres of pressure absolutely have to be given to fight the one atmosphere trying to stop it. So 10.7 minus one is the 9.7. It's got to be 9.7 atmospheres above atmospheric pressure. 9.7 atmospheres, 9.7 atmospheres above atmospheric pressure for you to make every one of those drops, however many there are. There's going to be a lot more of them if there's a huge volume of water that you're throwing up there. But for you to throw a huge volume of water up there, you need a tremendous amount of work to accomplish that. Much less than you would if there's just a little bit of water that's got to go up there, even though they're both going to the same height. It's a, lot hard, it's a lot easier for me to throw a small stone up into the air. I mean, let's say I, let's say a person was strong enough to do this. I don't know they are, but let's say, if, if there was a machine or something or whatever, it's some sort of system where you could somehow, okay, expend energy and do it. If you, could, if you were capable of throwing a baseball to a height of 100 meters, pretty impressive. It's a lot of energy that you have to give to the baseball. There's a lot of energy that you have to expend that you have, there's a lot of work that has to be done to get that baseball up to 100 meters. Sure. Try doing it with a shot put. You know, I have like, have 10, uh, you know, have, have 10 very powerful people uh, in some sense to throw that up there. You know, try to get a shot put to that height. You know, try to get something the size of I don't know, a 100 kilogram boulder. It's one thing if you can get something that's a, I don't know, maybe a tenth of a kilogram. <clears throat> maybe something's a tenth of a kilogram, you get it to go to 100 meter height. Pretty impressive. Tenth of a kilogram, you got it to reach 100 meter height. There's work you had to do to it. You had to give it kinetic energy to reach that height. It's a tenth of a kilogram is what the mass of it was. Try doing it with something that is not a tenth of a kilogram. Try doing it with an object with a boulder that is 100 kilograms or 1,000 kilograms even. It gets more difficult as the mass gets larger to get to that height. So right here, Bernoulli's equation, when they, do, when they divide it by V, kind of takes, takes the volume out of there. And then you have to account for it later, depending how how much is being thrown up there, thrown, thrown, thrown up into the air, okay? As we said, additionally, one might ask, what is the speed of the water when initially exiting the system in order, in order for it to reach the 100 meter maximum height? To answer this, we again appeal to the conservation of energy in one way or another. In this situation, again, I gotta, you know, look at this before I erase it. This looks, if you replace, if you multiply, if you multiply by V, if you multiply by V all the way across, delta W over capital, delta W over capital V is pressure. Multiply by V all the way across, you got delta W. The, multiply by V all the way across, you got delta W. Multiply by V all the way across, mass divided by volume becomes just mass, MGH. That's potential energy. How much potential energy did you give to the object? It's a loaded question. How much water went up there? If not a lot of water went up there, MGH, or delta H, whatever you would call this H if you want, the difference between the two, MGH is not a big answer if M is not big. If M is huge, if there's a huge amount of water leaving that, it's not a tiny uh, fountain, it's some massive fountain, something, who knows, some experiment. And I mean massive. It's coming out of something that's got a diameter of 10 meters. It's got a radius of five meters, and bam, water just enough enough water to fill this enough water to take care of the city, a big city like Chicago or New York. Enough water or, or Moscow or some some city. It's enough to do it. Sure, sure it is. 
It's a lot of mass, though. A lot of mass. If mass is a big number, of course, the amount of work that's got to be done is huge. If mass is a small number, not a lot of, not a lot of work has to be done. Yeah, but mass and volume are related to each other. A very, very small mass pertains to a very, very small volume. So M over V is a constant for a given material. Bernoulli's equation gets you off the hook. You don't have to worry about how massive something is. If you do want to talk about mass, you multiply by the volume. If it's a huge volume, huge amount of work had to be done. Okay. This looks a lot like MGH, conservation of energy all over again. Well, I'll tell you what. There's various things that can be said here, guys. Let me try to... I'm kind of arguing with myself how much of the notes I'm going to go into. No, the notes are there. They're there for you. They're written. Take a look at it. Um, the same thing. I guess at the bottom, there's no potential energy, and there's all kinetic energy. So make this guy zero, and then talk about kinetic energy. Something along those lines. Now, I already found out what the total energy of the system was, or the total energy density of the system is work divided by volume. This is what I found out. I can set this equal to kinetic energy, and I think I'm in business. Let's have a look at it. All right, well, let's see how you want to do this. Um, kind of, Let me kind of jump the gun a little bit here. I'm going to say to you that initially there's no, uh, I'm sorry, at the final destination, there's no speed. At the, a lot of ways to go here, I guess you could say. Um, kind of look at Bernoulli's equation and say what's going on here. Um, I guess I can say when we do this, we're going to talk about the pressure or the work, I mean there's a, there's, there's a whole lot going on. We'll just say this much, when it, when it, when it fires out, the pressure is not the, the, the big issue here. I, I guess I can say that at the very, very beginning, there's a lot of, I'm doing going a little, little, little away from my notes here, guys. Here's the beginning kinetic energy density. It's kinetic energy divided by volume. Remember, they, they're very clever about that. They're very clever. Bernoulli was very clever about that. Um, let me subtract that on each side. Let me go the other way. Let me subtract this guy on each side. Well, I think we've been here. Just make sure. Right. You can see here the P1, P2. Ain't much of an issue. If I get it, I'm talking about two extremes. The two extremes, the P1 and the P2, aren't really going to enter into it. They do and they don't. Uh, the delta, at the end of the day, um, if this is a great extreme, I don't want to talk too much beyond what I'm doing right here. I think I can maybe cause a little more harm than good here. This is a real big extreme right here. This guy right here on this side. What do we mean? Uh, the greatest kinetic energy, the greatest amount of kinetic energy per volume minus the smallest amount of kinetic energy per volume is actually the total pressure difference of the system. It's actually going to be P1 minus P2 uh, is what, it, what it's equal to. The, the delta P, the, 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 you know, 
when this extreme occurs, there is no, there's no height consideration, I guess, that you're, you're kind of looking at. I'm just saying here, right when this thing shoots out, um, at the very extreme, at the, at the extreme of this being zero at the very top, all of this right here, um, there's a number of ways to write this, and I, we got this. That, ex that maximum difference in kinetic energy is equal to the maximum difference in potential energy per unit volume, which is equal to delta P throughout the system. They don't go there too much, but it's true. So what are we trying to say here? Well, there's, there's a lot there, and I'm about to erase that delta P. I don't want to get into that too much. That, that's not the big part of the, it's significant. This is an extreme, and this is also an extreme. When what? When Y1 is equal to zero, and Y2 is the maximum height, and when V1 is the maximum velocity, and V2 is the minimum velocity of zero, they are equal and they are indicative of the total energy of the system. You guys remember that we said the energy of the system, uh, you know, where do you want to go? How, how do you want to go here with this? Uh, like I said, if we got an issue, get rid of the delta. At least for now, get rid of the delta. It's the total energy of the system. If this guy's at a minimum, zero, then the maximum PE is equal to the energy of the system. If, so if this guy's at a minimum at zero, the PE max is the energy of the system. If this guy is equal to zero, a minimum, the KE max is also equal to In all circumstances, E is equal to KE max, PE max, if that helps at all. Do you want to divide by V on each side? This is the PE, this is the PE divided by V, this is the KE divided by V, and this is the delta. And this is the P, and, this, and that's the P divided by V. If you're going to do a delta, it still holds up. There ain't much to say beyond that, you guys. Now, so that's, that's kind of where it's coming from. That, this right here is some justification for this statement. Okay. For us right now, that's not a big deal. When we're solving these problems, we ain't worried about E too much. We're worried about right here. You see how that comes out. Okay, it's pretty legible. Let's make that a little bit bigger, maybe. Always want to check that it's that's decently visible. It should be, you guys. All right, that's that's a big one. Um, the change in KE equals the change in PE, and there's a lot going on in that regard. How do you want to go from here? Uh, you know, you can, you can work this a bunch of ways here, guys. Um, the change in the KE is going to give you the change in the PE. And if both hit an extreme, like I did right here, there you go. This is really, divide by V on each side, that's what this is. Multiply by V on each, multiply by V on each side. What's V? V is the amount of volume of water. V is the amount of volume of water that is coming out of there. 
What if V is small? Well, it's not very, it's not a very big, there's not a lot of water being expelled. It's going to a big height though. It's like the baseball being thrown up in the air. What if there is a lot of water? Uh, that's like a massive cannonball. That's a thousand kilograms being thrown to the height. It's a lot harder to get a massive cannonball of 1,000 kilograms up into the air to reach a height of 100 meters. 100 kilogram cannonball thrown to a height of 100 meters is much more difficult than to send a one kilogram ball to a, to a height of 100 meters. Multi this and that are identical. Multiply by V on each side. Rho times, rho times volume, capital V. Multi this is volume. I can't emphasize that enough. This is volume. Multiply by volume on each side, V, it becomes one half True, true. Um, at the very top, it's zero. Call V1, small V1, just call it V now. This guy's zero. At the very top, it's got no velocity. At the beginning, it's got a whole bunch. The Y1 height is zero. So y2, call y2 equal to h, whatever you want. Wow, that looks awfully familiar. Multiply by, multiply by 2 on each side. Multiply by 2 on each side and divide by m. Yeah, or H is Y2 minus Y1. That's all it is, guys. Does it work that way here? Better believe it does. What do you say? You know, like I said, we know at the very, at the very top of the, of the trajectory, V2 is 0. At the bottom, Y1 is 0. So we got 1 half, 1 half rho, V1 squared equals rho g y2. Let's multiply by 2 on each side and divide by rho. Multiply by 2 on each side. Multiply by 2 on each side and divide by rho on each side. Y1 is the square root of 2g y2. Guys, I'm not saying anything too profound here. They're the same thing. We just don't know the raw energy con under consideration because we don't know the volume. If you got a thousand times more volume per second getting up there than you earlier had, you better believe it's a thousand times more energy to make it get to there. It's a thousand times, I better have a power source, an energy source with a thousand times more energy than what I needed, than what I was able to use when it was a lot lighter. When it was a kilogram of water going up there every second, compare that to a thousand kilograms of water getting up there every second. Big difference. The equations still hold. Every individual particle is what you're talking about. So this idea about energy density is huge, profound. Well, okay, I mean, you, you've seen the argument. I, I write it a little differently in my notes when you look at it, but it's, it's essentially the same thing. Plug the stuff in there, you guys. Plug the stuff in there. That's a 2. That's 9.8. This is 100. 2 times 9.8. Uh, 2 times 9.8 is 19.6. 19.6 times 100 is 1,960. 1,960, the square root of 1,960, and that's what that V is. V1 is, you know, 
V1 is going to be equal to V is going to be equal to. That thing's, you don't want to be near this thing when it's coming out, especially if there's a huge mass of water coming out. Especially when there's a huge mass of water coming out. So let's see what we've got here. Let me write that here. Let me keep it there for a second. Um, it's coming out like that. And again, these equate one cannot help but see conservation of energy everywhere when we're doing something like this, you guys. What's the power required, you know, to get something like this going? I guess I got to take, I got to find out how much, how much total kinetic, you know, you know, how much total kinetic energy is going to be changed. I'm taking water from zero, from zero, somehow, some way. Some way the engineers made it that, okay, the water is at rest, and now let's fire that water up there. Let's send this water across the city through pipes. Let's figure this out. Well, the more water you're sending, even in ideal circumstances, the more water you're sending, the more work you have to do. It's as simple as that, to get it to go there at a particular rate. I guess I'd have to multiply by, you know, I'd have to take this, one half rho v squared, Let's just call the V the, the final thing. Uh, you, could make, you could play this a whole bunch of ways. How much water, you know, how much power is required? Well, I know P looks like pressure, looks like rho. I get it. I'm sorry. There's a lot of redundancy in all this stuff, you guys. Um, power. Total work divided by time. Okay, uh, how much work do you want to do? Well, I want to get a mass, this much mass, working against gravity. I want to get it to a height h. And I want to do it in a time t. Well, how could you do that? Could you take rho and multiply it by the volume that you want? Rho times the volume times G times H over T. And there's a lot you can say here. There's a lot you could do. Um, and I think in one of my uh, example problems from an old test, uh, we talked something like that. There, there, there's, there's discussion pertaining to something like that. Okay. Uh, so you can look at it. Some, of, some of the old tests that I have that I have posted for you there. You should be able to get that. Uh, what's the volume? What's the volume flow rate? I guess I could find, if I knew how much volume <clears throat> is exiting, how much volume is exiting per unit time times rho GH, that'd give me the power. I could also take um, kind of look at it, guys. I could take one half mv squared, divide it by t. Uh, so how would you do that? You'd, you'd do something like this. You'd go one half. You go one half rho capital V. That's mass. Um, V squared, that's how much, that's how much is going to go. At what rate is it leaving? At what what amount of mass is leaving per second? Okay, and that works with flow rate. You could go like this. This right here would be equal to this, be equal to the power. How much is coming out? There's various tricks you can do on that. And like I said, I have that in one other. One other problem that I have there. One other problem that I have fu fully solved for you guys. All right. Uh, thank you for your time, guys. Uh, there it is. Look at the notes on Canvas as well. And uh, all the best to you. We'll talk again.